Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. Today we're going to walk through a quick version of my Substance Painter pipeline. Now, I'm definitely not the most advanced user of Painter, but this quick tip should show you just enough so that you can get started using it alongside Cinema 4D and Redshift. We'll be starting off with this small Kitbash sci-fi canister in Cinema 4D, and our goal is to make a quick painted metal texture with some surface imperfections and a label or decal of some sort. We'll hop over to our UV layout. We can see that the UVs aren't really all that great on this object, so we'll start off in doing some basic unwrapping and unpacking. So running the automatic UV in packed mode with a little bit of spacing has gotten me a result that I think I'm happy with for now. Our main goal is just to make sure that every item is laid out and nothing is overlapping. So I'll create just a basic C4D material. It doesn't need to be a redshift one, and we'll apply that to our object. Now, if you're applying multiple materials to an object, it'll almost act as groups in Substance Painter, but we'll see more about that later. So things are looking good enough for what we'll need. I think I'm ready to export. We want to select FBX. We've got Substance Painter open, so we'll make a new file and we'll navigate to that FBX. I like working in 4K resolution and it's good habit to use the OpenGL normal format, which is what Redshift will want. So we've got our object loaded in. Now I've got a little bit different of a layout. If we had multiple objects or multiple materials all combined into one FBX, we would be able to toggle through them up here. So the first thing that I do really once loaded up is I go to edit and then I bake the mesh maps. A 2K resolution is gonna be all right. This step allows Painter to calculate lots of stuff like edges, curvature, and other useful things like normals, which we'll be able to use shortly. But I'll come over here to my shelf and I'll use this filter for smart materials. So I think this one will work nicely as a start. I'll drag and drop it onto my object. This smart material will get us as a starting point and it's gonna use some of those mesh maps that we just baked. We can open up this smart material folder and see what the different layers are doing. Everything I've figured out about using Painter was really done just this way, poking around and seeing what the different layers are doing. So this smart material has a base color and from here, this is where we can change our color. So maybe I'll opt for a bit of an orange. We've also got the other parameters like material roughness. Also here we have an edge damage. So if we turn this eyeball on and off, we can see that this is exposing some chipped edges along our object, which is pretty cool. Next to that layer, we have its mask. We'll then open up the layer stack for that mask. Selecting this curvature, we can see up here the global balance, which is how much strength it has. We can also adjust its contrast. So this curvature layer here is a generator or a smart mask in Painter. If we want to learn more about these, we can turn its eyeball off and then navigate over to this tab, which is where other smart mask presets live and perhaps drag and drop a different one. I'm gonna scroll down a bit and find some of the other components that make up this generator or smart mask and perhaps try the random seed. If I wanna use both of these in tandem, so maybe we'll try changing this top mask to an add blending mode and the two of them will work together. I think that's looking pretty good. Since we gotta keep this quick tip moving, let's add that decal. I'll navigate to this folder of images that I've got and we can drag and drop this into the interface. This will bring up the import menu. So for right now, I can bring this in as a texture. I'll bring it in as my library. It'll pop up automatically over here in our textures menu, or we could search for it by name if we need to. Since my particular label has some color information as well as an alpha channel, I think I can bring it in just as a base color. Now it's a bit small, but we can resize it by hitting the scale tool or using this icon up here. As I'm scaling this up, I'm starting to see it fading a bit on the sides. And for right now, I think I can just up my projection depth. If I really wanted to, I could explore some of these other projection types, or I could edit the vertices. So this is kind of like using the warp tool or any of the corner pinning stuff in other Adobe programs. If I want to move it, I can use the surface tool and this will move and sort of wrap around. I think that's looking pretty good. Last thing we'll do here inside of Substance Painter is add in a little bit of writing. Now I try my best to do this non-destructively. We'll create a new fill layer, adjust our color. So I'll just say that this is gonna be sort of like a black Sharpie. So I'll sort of adjust glossiness just so that it looks like it's fresh writing. I'll right click on this layer and create a black mask, which will hide all of that. So then we'll come in 
right clicking on the mask icon now and create a paint layer. So we've got our marker brush ready. I think I'll just write something on the side of this real quick. Cool. One last quick thing I want to do is take this label decal and I'm going to drag it down a couple layers in the stack so that it looks like it's underneath some of this dirt and damage. Now the nice thing with our writing layer, since we did this as a mask, should we feel the need to adjust the roughness or any of the color options, we can do that pretty simply. Whereas if you were to paint directly onto the layer, you wouldn't be able to edit these settings after you've finished painting. We'll just make sure to save our project file and then we'll come up to File Export Textures. We'll get things set up with an Output Destination folder so that our textures go where we want them to. I'll turn off the channels that I don't need. We'll uncheck Normal, Height, and AO, leaving the base color, metallic, roughness, and normals OpenGL. We'll click Export, which will send these to the destination folder we set up. Then we can hit Save Settings, Save Painter, and close it. Once these are saved, we'll load them into the Redshift node graph and get each of the textures plugged in accordingly, making sure to select the sRGB color space for the diffuse or base color, and then raw color space for the other textures. So starting up our render, we've got a simple dome light and a floor, and now that we've got our material and textures applied to this sci-fi canister, I think everything's looking pretty good. All right, so I think that'll cover everything for this quick tip. I could definitely do another one of these that's dedicated just to Substance Painter, so if you'd like me to make that, please make sure to comment below. I hope this information helps you out, and it encourages you to try out Substance Painter, even if it's the first time. So with that all said, thank you so much for watching.